Adventure World is back. Welcome to this special Thronebreaker developer stream. My name is Pavel Buja and I'm joined by not one, but by two developers. And on my left, Kuba Szamałek, Principal Director, and Mateusz Tomaszkiewicz, the Game Director for Gwent, the Witcher card game. Hey everyone. Hello guys. Hi. Nice to have you here. Before we jump into the Thronebreaker gameplay, can you guys tell me what is Thronebreaker for those who might not know and are watching? So Thronebreaker started off as a uh, single player campaign for uh, Gwent. Mm -hmm. However, as we developed it, it kind of grew and grew and grew. And uh, now we consider it to be an RPG that uh, uses card game mechanics to show battles. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has choices, consequences, it has Ooh. all these elements. Uh, that people loved from our previous games. It's a fully fledged game set in the Witcher universe, which has our trademark choices and consequences system. Uh, a lot of non linearities uh, mm -hmm. for players to explore, and uh, gray moral choices where nothing is right or wrong, but everything is a shade of gray. Gray, I like that. Just like The Witcher 3. And speaking of The Witcher 3, both of you guys worked on The Witcher 3. How mm -hmm. different was working on Thronebreaker from your perspective? Well, I'd say that th th there's some differences, especially, uh, you know, backstage, so to say. Mm -hmm. So the stuff mm -hmm. that we worked on, we, went, mm -hmm. we worked on a different engine and uh, the systems that we used were, were different. But mm -hmm. uh, in its core, from Breaker is a, is, is a Witcher game mm -hmm. and it's uh, recognizably uh, part of the Witcher uh, universe. Uh, from the narrative st standpoint, um, there are some differences. We have the um, narrator who narrates the story, mm -hmm. who sets the mm -hmm. uh, context for the events. Uh, and we, the tools that we use to tell the story are, are somewhat different. Mm. Uh, but in its essence, it's, it's a Witcher story. I would say also like uh, the perspective in which you explore the world is vastly different because it's an isometric game. It's not the yeah. third person anymore. So we had to uh, reinvent the way we show the world. And uh, we had to think, uh, you know, how to interact with the world, we had to think all over again uh, what kind of systems do we want, mm -hmm. so we had to design it from the scratch. Mm -hmm. And well, I personally don't have experience with uh, isometric uh, RPGs mm -hmm. uh, as a developer, mm -hmm. so it was a big challenge and it was very interesting to work on. I, I love isometric mm -hmm. uh, RPGs, so it was very, yeah. very cool to we work are, we on. We are both fans of uh, old school isometric RPGs and... Yeah. Um, like Heroes. Uh, well, uh, I'd say, you know, yeah, the Baldur's, Baldur's Gate, Gate, Fallout series, but, yeah. Yeah, you know, stuff like that. Of course, uh, Heroes of Might and Magic, uh, Banner Saga, yeah. games like these were also part of our inspirations. Mm -hmm. Like, there are some systems which, were, uh, which we have in the game, uh, which are, you know, very heavily inspired by mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. games. But, uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of RPGs, in terms of isometric RPGs, uh, Baldur's Gate, Fallout, uh, and so on. Arcane and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Okay, cool. So as you guys probably know, or maybe don't know, you can pre-order Thronebreaker by going to witchertales.com. But before that, maybe a little bit of stats. What can mm. we expect when we buy Thronebreaker? So Thronebreaker uh, started off, like I said, as a single player campaign for 10 hours. However, mm -hmm. right now it's over 30 hours of gameplay. Um, yeah. Since we had to basically build the game uh, mm -hmm. completely differently than the multiplayer version is built, uh, it has over 200 uh, custom-made cards, uh, which, uh, because it is a single-player experience, are vastly different, and mm -hmm. they can be overpowered. They can be, which you know, very yeah. difficult mm -hmm. to beat. They can be these weird custom things which would never work in multiplayer. Mm -hmm. But here we can play around with them. Um, we have 20 uh, different ending states of the world. So based on your uh, choices mm -hmm. that you make throughout the game, this, you, you know, you might get one of these outcomes. And uh, yeah, I would say these are the most important mm -hmm. stats. Something we also like to mention is, is the fact that uh, we recorded more uh, VO lines for the Thronebreaker mm. than we did for the Hearts of Stone uh, expansion for The Witcher 3. Yes. So this is really a sizable chunk uh, of a story. It's not something that we tacked you know, onto yeah. uh, a, a card game. Mm -hmm. It's a story in its own right with elements of it told via uh, battles shown with, with cards and Gwent. Mm -hmm. And of course it's localized like all our previous games, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. these voiceovers, so it, it's going to be localized into 12 languages. Exactly. So even more than The Witcher 3 mm -hmm. Wild Hunt. 
Awesome. Um, Kuba, question for you. Uh, regarding storytelling, you already said that we have a mm. narrating, like setting um, the scenes and talking about what the characters are feeling. What else was different from the storytelling perspective? Well, I, I think the biggest difference from my perspective was mm -hmm. that we are showing the world of The Witcher from a di very different pair of eyes. So yeah. before, uh, players had the opportunity to explore the world of The Witcher as the eponymous Witcher. Mm -hmm. uh, Geralt was an outsider. Um, he was somewhat like a ronin, traveling on his own, uh, with his own uh, set of rules, his own codex of how to um, deal with, with the obstacles mm -hmm. he encountered. And Meeve is very different. She, she's at the, exactly the opposite end of the spectrum. She is a very, she's an esteemed ruler. Uh, she's accompanied by a sizable retinue of advisors and generals. And uh, everything she does, everything she says, uh, is important. It shapes her image, it influences how people see her. Yeah. And she uh, can never forget that. She, she, mm -hmm. she always has to think about the political aspect of what she, she's doing. And also the uh, challenges, the moral uh, challenges mm -hmm. that we uh, pose to players who um, you know, walk around the world of The Witcher and Meath's shoes are very different from those that we set uh, for, for Geralt. Uh, because her choices uh, not only uh, you know, uh, influence her or aren't only relevant to her, but also the, the whole army. So uh, what do you do when your soldiers uh, break the rules? What do you mm -hmm. do uh, when your advisors betrays you, but mm -hmm. he's still necessary for the well-being of the army? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, the uh, choices that you will be making are, are different, uh, but they are, uh, again, very difficult and set in this gray morality of the Witcher universe. Awesome. Yeah, I would say there are also a lot of similarities, like mm -hmm. in terms of like what, well, like Kuba said, the the, the morally gray choices, mm -hmm. uh, difficult choices with uh, lasting consequences, where you know none of the choices actually is a good one because you know you don't want to do these things, but yeah. sometimes as a ruler you have to make these you choices, have to right? It's just yeah. to, like Kuba said, uh, shown through the different pair of eyes. Yeah, cool. and even though, uh, as you will see uh, in, in, in a second, uh, the art style is different, it's a little bit cartoony, it's the same mm -hmm. mature universe yeah. which doesn't shy from controversial issues. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. So speaking of which, let's stop talking and let's jump into the game and then we'll talk a little bit more. But yeah, let's just go straight in and let's set the scene because uh, as you guys know we had journalists over last week and they already showed some elements of the tutorial but what we're going to show you is just what happens after the tutorial mm -hmm. and you're pretty much uh, we let mm -hmm. you go mm -hmm. we let yeah. you be free yeah, and do, free roam. yeah you can free roam do your own things so um guys can you set the story mm -hmm. so yeah, i'm just gonna are, open the oh. map but you can write over that okay yeah. so we are about an hour into the game uh, Queen Meeve has returned from a royal summit and she has found her kingdom, Lyria, in disarray. So her young son, Willem, who was entrusted with, with the kingdom, doesn't seem to be do doing well. The country is overrun by bandits mm. who call themselves uh, Strays of Spala. Mm -hmm. And Meeve's on a mission to um, resolve this issue once and for all, capture the, their, their leader and take him for, for questioning to the capital. Uh, so Mateusz is now showing you the whole map. Uh, our our position is marked by by the crown, and the yellow exclamation mark is uh, where we are uh, headed. Mm -hmm. This is uh, Lord Clayton's estate, where we know uh, that uh, these bandits, Trace of Spala, were headed. Mm -hmm. But as, as you can see, the map is much much bigger mm -hmm. uh, than what you can see uh, on on the main screen. Mm -hmm. And this is just one of five mm -hmm. uh, maps that we uh, have in the Thronebreaker campaign. Um, so there's a lot of stuff to see and explore, and each of the maps uh, is different, has its own uh, character. Yeah, as you can see, there are a lot of markers. These symbolize side activities, mm -hmm. and uh, you're basically after the tutorial, you're left to explore. Uh, however, yes, we're going to show you very specific things. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I guess I'll get yep. so to it. So uh, let's go get towards the um, place where we know the bandits are hiding. Mm -hmm. And their leader, the Duke of Dogs, mm -hmm. as they mm -hmm. call him. You spy that column of smoke? God damn it! Make haste! As the Clayton estate appeared from behind a tree line, the Queen and all in her retinue knew at once they had arrived too late. A veritable swarm of bandits milled about the yard. Who have we here? I'll take a gander, lads. The Queen herself is deigned to come and see us. See you? Then kill you. The strays of Sparla. Tis you who lead them. 
Tis you they call the Duke of Dogs. Aye, tis I they dub so. And in other pleasant ways. Prince of Pariahs, Thane of Thieves, Baron of Brigands, and Marquess of Mendacity. Colourful titles all. Yet you omit one. Come on, cutthroat! I beg your pardon and cry foul. I am anything but common. You needn't get excited, Caldwell. Where is Lord Clayton? Sadly, my lord's no longer with us. Turned us away, you see. Denied us hospitality. A sacred right, after all. Angered the gods mightily, I expect, as he promptly met a tragic end. Fell in the well and broke his neck. I've heard enough. Two arms! Attack! So yes, the uh, battles in Thronebreaker, like I mentioned before, are, are symbolized by uh, Gwent battles, obviously. Yeah. Uh, so here we can see who is our opponent, and we're gonna fight the Duke of Dogs, he's a boss. And there are hints you can find on the screen, as well as some uh, flavor context. Mm -hmm. It's probably worth mentioning that the icons at the bottom uh, inform you that this uh, battle yeah. will be following, uh, this is an important story special battle, but it also set. will be mm -hmm. following a special rule set. So since uh, this is a single player game, we can play more with, yeah. with the rules and, and make things, uh, you know, interesting with, yeah. with, with changing things a little bit. So this battle will only last one round. And here we have a short part of the tutorial that explains the mulligan which uh, most people that play Gwent are familiar with, I expect. Especially that now uh, the mulligan screen changed. We also mm -hmm. uh, featured it in some of the homecoming videos. So you, you see when which cards you're mulliganing. But like you said, everything gameplay-wise is tailored to a single player, oh, player experience. So you can do crazy stuff. And we withdrew everything. So the special thing here is Watch that Gascon, the boss, he's on our side actually, yeah. and he'll keep jumping between our rows, and the thing we have to do is to place units next to him, and we have to kind of try and grab him to overpower him. So I'm just going to do this with the Skyvemen, which I can boost with yeah, my leader Weave ability. Yeah, has a special ability where she boosts a unit. And also it gets armor thanks to that. And plus the sidemen additionally get boosts um, when you use the ability. Catch! And you probably already heard that uh, we have a lot of new boards to show. This this uh, board is uh, uh, characteristic to Rivia. Uh, sorry, to Lyrium. This is where we are using it the most. Mm -hmm. And it's really lovely. I, I love all the work that our FX uh, artists and animators and, and, and um, 2D and 3D artists put into it. So you can see that the blades of the windmill are animated and they're going around. That, uh, mm -hmm. There are butterflies uh, flying around the bushes and... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can move the camera around yeah. to show more of it. And uh, the pieces of paper on the board are fluttering in the wind. So there's a lot to see and a lot to, you know, admire. It's, it's a really beautiful board and it's just one of many we'll show in the Front Berkey campaign. Yeah, and for me what I really like is, is the leaders having them on the board. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we use motion capture for them. Um, they're fully animated. It's really, really cool to have them here present. As you can see, he's trying to get away. I have to place mm -hmm. more units next to him to yep. overpower him. Now we have more enemy units on your on your side. Can you actually show the, what the infiltrators do? Yeah, Is the infiltrators are nasty. They basically, he plays them on my side yeah. and he will, after one turn, steal the power of the unit to his right. And then go back to his own side of the board. Yes. Yeah. So I basically should try to block him, but right now I care more about Gascon because this is our main objective in this battle. Exactly. You have to overpower him. Boom. Oh, oh now actually... <laughs> now actually he's just gonna steal six. Yeah. Because Gascon moved there. Which is not very good for him. You can see why they are called the Strays of Spala. <laughs> they are a group of bandits um, uh, which escaped one of the prisons in, in the neighboring kingdom of Rivia. And running away, they stole torturers, tools, and equipment. And this is why they were fighting with unusual weapons. What, this is why they are working uh, wow, wow. iron masks. Well, and they are quite a sight to behold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, as you guys know, the build that we're showing is work in progress, so you might see some issues. interesting things on the board, issues, but yeah. Like I said, work in progress, these things happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the VFX here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of stuck. We got a job to do. Okay, let's try to play this maybe. I'm coming, I'm coming. Can I get more copies? Yeah, rule set is the same. You have a uh, maximum of two bronze copies of cards. And also deck builder, maybe we can show a little bit later. Like yeah, actually camp. I'm gonna go yeah. into the camp right after yeah. this, okay, just to cool. show it off. Yeah, it's probably also worth, worth mentioning that there are different versions of Meep, so depending mm -hmm. on what weapon you choose to equip, you will have a different uh, ability to use. So as you are progressing in the campaign, you can you can find new weapons for Meep. Mm -hmm. How many are there? Six or five? Uh, I think more than six, to mm -hmm. be honest. So yeah, the, the way to change her leader ability is basically to equip a different mm -hmm. weapon for her. Mm -hmm. Other than that, you also have these... Oh, wow. Sorry, Some something happened on the ground. Yeah. Yes, so other than that, you also get special trophies, like this Lyria trophy, mm -hmm. which is basically always starting on the board when the game starts. And uh, yeah, I can change it to a different one. It, they obviously do different things. This one specifically reduces her timer, so I can use her more often. Oh, okay, he got rid of my unit next to him. Okay. Actually, we, I think we managed to overpower him. Yeah. yeah. So the battle should He's end down shortly. down to zero. As soon as it yeah, yeah. triggers. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. You did it. Yeah. How many have, times have you played this battle? <laughs> Quite a few. <laughs> Quite a few. I can't say the same for you, I fear. You'd have done better to die in battle. Bound for Lyria now, where the hangman will have his way with you. Splendid! I've ever wished to see the capital. Ugh. Take him away. As soldiers placed the Duke of Dogs in shackles, there was a sudden commotion. A messenger rushed in, sweaty, gasping for air, smelling of smoke and blood. His gaze spoke terror. Your Majesty, Graces! Nilfgaard's crossed the Yoruga. Black-clad hordes. Villages burn. Folk lie murdered. Nilfgaard! Gods help us! They march for Dravagred. Prince Willem, he can't hope to arrive in time with aid. Help us! You must! Dravagrad. Blast it all. Listen close, soldier. You're to take a fresh mount, ride hard back to your commander, and say the Queen comes to repel the foe. Your Grace, begging your pardon, our force. We aren't many. Let's send for reinforcements first, elsewise. Reynard, I've seen Nilfgaard's trebuchets at work. Should we delay until we're stronger, they'll leave no stone standing in Dravagrad. We must ride for the town at once. As her men prepared to march, Meave climbed the manor's tower. Smoke rose in columns in the distance. As more black pillars appeared one after the other, she knew they meant another home, another barn, another mill was in flames. Tears welled in her eyes, yet they were tears of anger. Bastards. If it's war they seek, it's war I shall win. Reynard, prepare to ride! <laughs> so yeah, actually, for completing this battle, we have unlocked a different weapon for me, which I'm gonna equip now. Mm -hmm. Helpful pop up, to mind you. Yes. Yep. So, so let's actually, jump into the camp. one very big system we have in the game is the uh, war camp, and you can enter the war camp at any point uh, from the exploration map. It kind of, mm, you know, it, it's kind of reminiscent to the Heroes of Might and Magic uh, castles. Uh -huh. So basically, we can upgrade it. We can build different buildings in it. And these buildings give us access to different uh, kinds of units. Mm -hmm. So I could build the, war, the training grounds, for example. There we have it. 
which unlocks these units. Unfortunately, I think I don't have any kind of resource right now to, mm -hmm. to actually buy them, but I can find them on the exploration map. Mm -hmm. However, we could show you... Oh, actually, yes. Actually, we can show you the uh, deck builder tutorial first. <laughs> I'm just going to click through this. So, yes, you recruit units here, like this Wagenberg, for example, yeah. and then you can add it to your army. And like I mentioned before, you can also change the Meave's weapon. So basically you go into this screen and you select the weapon you mm -hmm. want to use. So this one is a bit different. It's not a defensive one. It doesn't boost my units like the one I have right now. Mm -hmm. It will damage all the units uh, with, a, with the same power level by four, mm -hmm. which is quite good, actually. I'm going to get that. And uh, you might see a few different um, things here which weren't present on the live version. So, for example, one of the big changes we did is the uh, provision system. Yeah. So, right now you have to have the minimum of 25 cards mm -hmm. in your deck. Uh, however, you're limited by the provisions. Mm -hmm. Each of the cards has a provision cost, here which you can bottom. see here at mm -hmm. the bottom. And uh, based on that, you can basically fill out your deck. It, there is no limit of golds or uh, bronzes anymore. So you could, in theory, fill it with golds. Although, due to the uh, provision limit, it's not that easy. So you can. It's probably <laughs> worth mentioning uh, that in the uh, single-player uh, campaign, you can uh, actually raise, the, raise your limit yes. by uh, building certain structures mm -hmm. in the camp. Yes, exactly. Uh, also, there are things that are uh, unique for a single-player here. So, like I mentioned before, there is a trophy. And there are trinkets, and the trinkets are basically items which you find uh, mm -hmm. during your travels. And these will always start in your hand at the beginning of each uh, Gwent game. Mm -hmm. So right um, now I have two slots. I could expand that with buildings as well. Mm -hmm. Also, one thing to mention is when you're crafting a card, you now have uh, three things that you need to take into account. You have gold, you have wood, and you have um, recruits. recruits. Yes. So recruits you get throughout the map. Sometimes mm -hmm. people will join you, sometimes yes. you will sometimes just get... Sometimes you request, sometimes exactly. based on your decisions. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they will leave or die. Um, okay. And yes, you need them to recruit the units. Mm -hmm. And gold and, and the wood you basically uh, spend to build buildings, but also to train them, to equip them, basically. Uh, cool. I think that's it from here. Yeah, we can show some other structures, like for example the Royal Tent. Yeah, Royal Tent this is, is a, your yeah, command center. Um, so as you mentioned, you play as a monarch. So uh, you depend not only on your own uh, pair of eyes and ears, but you also uh, get reports from your spies. You correspond with other kings and you intercept enemy communications. And it's, uh, it actually makes a lot of sense uh, to read those because they sometimes offer you information uh, pertinent to quests that you will do in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you read them, you might uh, glance some information which will help you to make the right choice or limit your losses or mm -hmm. uh, surprise your enemy. There are also uh, tabs for maps and keys uh, and card fragments because you can also find these. We haven't found a map yet, mm -hmm. but um, you can find maps which uh, point to locations of, of, of treasures. And maybe let's take I a think look at inside the cool. yeah. 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 mm -hmm. So, exactly, this is where you can uh, talk uh, with your companions. This is the beginning of our adventure, so mm -hmm. there's only a few people inside. Mm. Um, but later on, the place will be filled with people you met on your Worked journey. A mess once ah. no meat, <laughs> yeah. even sausage. <laughs> Um, and th these companions won't necessarily get along, so they will have conflicting views on how to resolve certain issues. They will offer you uh, very different advice, mm -hmm. and depending on whose advice you follow, they, they will react very strongly, and sometimes they might even leave your retinue if they mm -hmm. decide that they, they cannot uh, agree with your, with your decisions. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, one of the aspects of you know, being a good monarch is being able to play out these uh, mm -hmm. you know, conflicts bite, uh, skillfully and make sure that everyone is... Uh, uh. Uh, you know, yes. happy to perform the duties for you, the Queen of uh, Lyria-Nivia. At ease, Reynard. At yeah, and for example, like Mateusz is showing right now, you can talk to Reynard about mm. different things. Yeah, but maybe... Um, but we'll... I think we'll, we'll talk yeah, to him we'll, later. Yeah, yeah exactly. We'll, we'll move on with the quest. But it's also worth mentioning that these characters have rich backstories. I think you can move on and we'll just keep on, you know, talking. Um, and you can learn about their uh, past, you can learn First about their secrets. Bandits. 
And by doing so, we can actually unlock better versions of these cards. So it uh, mm. pays to talk to, to them, not only in terms of you know satisfaction from uh, learning more about their uh, your 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 friends or your your advisors, but you can also unlock better versions of their cards. And we're grabbing the loot right now, taking mm. all the stuff that we got from the battle. So additional resources that we can use later. As you can see, there's quite a lot of things. You missed the barrels, though. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> it's fine. I'll do without it. <laughs> Meave's force oh, my favorite guy. straight towards a Nilfgaardian company. To the Queen's surprise, the invaders did not immediately assume battle formation. They proceeded instead in her very direction without a sign of panic. The man leading the Nilfgaardians was clad in rich robes. He exuded pride and the scent of musk. I am Traherne Vardifir, Your Majesty. I was asked to present to your esteemed grace the ultimatum of the forces of the Empire of Nilfgaard. The envoy cracked the seal on a scroll, unfurled it, took a deep breath, and began to read. I, General Ardal Epdahi, demand the immediate and unconditional surrender of Lyria and Rivia. Elsewise, I will burn down every city, town, village and temple place all your subjects in chains and your armed men defeated and captured i will hang along the roadsides as a warning to all others in the barbarous north as the final threat echoed in meave's ears the envoy put away the scroll and stood waiting for her answer a mocking smile on his face he allowed himself this insolence believing the immunity accorded diplomats would shield him from any form of royal ire. Okay. So what shall we do? So this is one of the places where mm -hmm. we can actually make choices mm -hmm. and uh, we could kill the guy, mm -hmm. actually. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. What well, do you I think, think we should diplomat. do? We should be diplomatic, I think, at this yeah. point. I, I command your uh, self-restraint. <laughs> They always I thank attack you, him. sir. You always attack him? Really? Yeah. Oh, come on. No, I just can't do it. No. It's the accent. <laughs> the culturally backward north. Answered the queen in a voice frostier than Mahakam's snow-capped peaks. To delay this matter, I see no reason. So I give you my response to his excellency. Go ahead and try, Horson. That said, Meave slapped her mount with her reins and galloped away, leaving the Nilf guardians in dust. Envoy and escort turned to go whence they came, the Lyrians sending them off with a din of whistles and curses. So yeah, we opted not to fight them. Yeah. However, obviously we could play mm -hmm. this, one, uh, this one out. And of course, this choice would have had consequences further mm -hmm. down the road. Mm -hmm. So what you do in these situations is uh, important for what happens in the future. Seems we have another event coming up. Then one day, gazing towards the horizon, the Queen spotted Lyrian banners whipping about in the wind. At long last, she said with a smile. Meave resolved to speak with the commander, one Baronet Eldar. It was the first time they met, and the youth very much impressed her. Yet instead of questioning Eldar about the foe's troop movements, Reynard took the conversation down a seemingly irrelevant path. And how's your father, if I may ask? In good health, I hope. Yes, though he still nurses that bump he suffered while hunting last winter. Yet he's not one to complain. I'll tell him you asked. Irritated at the trivial nature of the conversation, Meave gave her horse a dose of her reins and cantered off. Once Eldar and his men were safely behind them, she took Reynard aside. Reynard's in trouble now. Reynard, this is no time for gossip and pleasantries. We are at war. Yes, Your Majesty. And in such times, little should be taken at face value, even a man's name. Get to the point, Reynard. Eldar's father died a month past. His son, I venture, should have known as much. But that means... oh, the bastard. Impeccable accent, though. I fear he's rather representative of what we face. Nilfgaardian spies are ever well prepared. Tell me, how did you know? He wears no mourning on his armor. We're not for that. I dare say I might never have guessed. What are your orders, Your Grace? To observe these Nilfgaardian mummers? 
So yeah, here we have another side quest, although I feel like showing you guys something mm -hmm. else. So I yeah. think mm -hmm. we'll also... We have to, to hurry to get to Dravograd in time, so mm -hmm. yeah. Let's uh, just move on. But no, yeah, so, some of the side quests they have, like... Uh, uh, you, you will find them on the main path, mm -hmm. like the guiding hour, you to them. Must mm -hmm. reach quickly. As you wish, Your Grace. So oh, actually, uh, another thing that we are uh, informing the players about here is that um, Nilfgaard has very good spies, and it isn't just the war machines and the heavy cavalry that you should be afraid of. What the devil is and this going is not on? the last encounter with, with a Nilfgaardian spy. Why does mm. Willem not ride out to face the foe? Relieve the siege towns. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't, can't say show you grace. another. System. We haven't had a single scroll I'll from just the let prince. Them finish. Yeah. Gods be damned! I have the impression I'm alone in fighting the black clouds. So yes, this is one of the side activities, which are actually presented in a bit different way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there are, uh, th th there's a short summary of the situation you, you encounter, and usually you're, you're um, facing a, a, a difficult situation. You, you get a report from your scouts, and you have to quickly decide what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And usually you um, uh, use some resources to, uh, to a certain uh, goal. And in this situation, we know that there are people trapped inside uh, a temple, and we can send some soldiers mm -hmm. to help them, which will increase our morale, which is another important system that we'll yes. probably cover in a, bit, uh, mm -hmm. in a little bit. But, but some costs, of your recruits uh, will yeah, basically recruits. die. Yeah. Uh, the morale system that Kuba mentioned, which, yes, I'm gonna do this, actually. So, the morale system actually helps us in battle. The higher the morale is, the mm -hmm. better our unit's performance in the battle. So, di it directly impacts their strength. Mm -hmm. uh, so, if you have high morale, the units have plus one, Strength, if you have low morale, it's minus one. If it's neutral, they only use their base value. Yeah, so again, in The Witcher 3, when you, when you, when you played, you only had to think about what Geralt thinks and he what he thinks is right. Whereas here, you also have to think about well, how your soldiers will, will perceive you. So sometimes you do something you personally don't agree with just to uh, make sure that the morale remains high. But here, A cry in turn went up and down Meave's ranks. Dum, dum, dum. And a battle. Mm -hmm. But it's a shortened battle, mm -hmm. as this we know. It's shortened, but it's standard, I think, from what I remember. Meaning there is no special mm -hmm. objective in this one. Mm -hmm. Maybe the uh, right moment to mention that uh, we are changing the name of uh, Swallow in uh, single player. Because I know that some people have been, you know, concerned with, with the fact that we're using a Witcher potion uh, on regular humans, so <laughs> that will be fixed in the final mm -hmm. release version. All right. So actually, this guy he plays some cards that are ambushes on my side, and they will do things which right now we don't see what specifically they'll do. Oh, and as you can see, I changed the weapon, so it no longer targets my mm -hmm. units. So you can only deal damage. Offensive. Now. Yeah. Boom. Card, so I can kill off this guy before he triggers. Mm -hmm. And as you can again. see, the board is a bit different. This one is no Guardian board. I think we didn't actually show this yeah, one. Yeah, we never mm. showed the Nov Guardian board, so you can see it here for the first time. It's the same type that will be um, for the multiplayer version of Gwent. There's a time to reap, a time to sow, and a time to die. Alba! And as you can see, there's uh, another uh, a different uh, model for the enemy leader. Mm -hmm. yep. And uh, a lot of these uh, leaders are uh, custom made for uh, the Thronebreaker campaign, mm -hmm. so they are in present the multiplayer version. Here we have a new garden scout. So these guys, I think, when they uncover, they will deal big damage to the units in mm -hmm. this row. So I might want to not place any more units in there for a while. I'm coming, I'm coming. Yes, and actually this Wagenberg, it has an interesting mechanic because the more units you play in this row, the more armor it gets. And at any point you can decide to use up that armor to deal damage to the entire row on the enemy exactly. side. So you decide when you want to trigger the ability yes. on the card. But of course the enemies could get rid of the armor. So yeah, th this Meave's weapon, it actually gets better if there are multiple copies of units mm -hmm. uh, with the same power on the opponent's side. Which I just uh, you destroy two fours. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So they these guys the activated. Boom. And there we have Reinhardt, which we saw in the dialogues. He will basically renew the ability of this card. So I mm -hmm. think actually what I could do to show you 
as this cool combo. So I can deal damage to these guys. Now I can move these guys. Then I play him. And these doing. get available to be used again. So I can move so them back, back, raise the power, and, and activate it. it again. I like these abilities. Pretty good combo. Mm -hmm. Look at us go, look at the points. 69 well points to 10. Well, like, like Kuba mentioned, I played it a few times before yeah. and I'm playing it on easy, so... <laughs> yeah. Uh, speaking of which, uh, how many difficulty modes will we have in the game? So, we used to have two difficulties, mm -hmm. which was story mode and uh, normal. Yeah. However, now we have three difficulties, which nice. is story mode, normal and hard. For people who like, uh, nice you know, a challenge. challenge. Nice. It's also worth mentioning that when you play on easy, you can actually skip battles you lost. Mm -hmm. So if you're in this game mostly for the story, uh, you yeah. know you won't be frustrated uh, to no end. Uh, if you if you decide not mm -hmm. to follow through, you can you can skip a battle. Yeah, you you can just One more story mechanic mode. which you might have seen in our previous streams is uh, range. Actually, this was introduced to mm -hmm. show more mm -hmm. uh, impact in terms of how the how you uh, position work. units. Exactly. Yes, how you position them. So this guy has a range of two, which means from the back from the range draw, he will only reach mm -hmm. melee. He mm -hmm. cannot target units yeah, exactly. in ranged. I would have to place him in melee to to target them. Oh. Mm, a highly curious case. Mm. Oh, boom. Oof. That's a lot of damage. Mm. OP much? Whoa. Yeah, well, he we killed some of the my points. units that had uh, uh, Death Wish ability, Again. so they don't damage to Again. him as well. Yeah. Again. Is a drummer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think place the top blitz unit from your deck. Yeah, I think he has nothing on us. I'm yeah. just gonna pass. 92 to 28. Ah, and he surrendered. Mm -hmm. Now we know why you're the game director. You, mm -hmm. you own this game, man. Easy. After the skirmish, the Queen's troops brought several Nilfgaardian prisoners before her. Reynard, who had the best command of their mongrel tongue, interrogated. His first question? How many battalions were marching on Dravagrad? Kes Zagdran ep Dravagrad ven. The prisoners whispered feverishly, then one spoke on their behalf. They would answer no questions until the Queen pledged to free them in return. The Lyrian soldiers saw this as arrogance and said as much. Conditions they're giving us now? Sons of whores! I say, we find a tree with a strong bow, several... Hmm. So yes, actually we can get some more informations here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to promise to free them. Ignoring the objections of her retinue, Meave pledged what the soldiers wished. They in turn admitted their commander had pushed forward ahead of the army's core force. He now awaited reinforcements that would let him take Dravagrad. The prisoners claimed these units would march through the village of Turnifen. Mm -hmm. To lay there in ambush, hold them. They could not join forces, Reynard whispered, leaning in towards the Queen. We would gain the advantage for the decisive battle. Meave had obtained invaluable information, while the prisoners would gain their freedom. Or so it seemed at the time. And actually I can be a bit of a dick here and mm -hmm. i think i'm going to do this i'm just going <laughs> to execute them anyway oh she listened closely to the prisoners nodding many times then she simply said hang them as they were dragged away the prisoners shouted protested cursed the queen to exactly no avail meave simply could not risk their betraying her position as easily as they'd betrayed their commanders so as you can see that day, oh. meave demonstrated she long. would show the invaders yet. no mercy the Lyrians marched off, strengthened in their resolve, prepared to fight to the death. So what I wanted to say uh, is that, it, as you can see, Neve is a very different character from Geralt. Um, you know, Geralt has its own set of rules that he followed and he wouldn't uh, kill people needlessly or unnecessarily. 
Uh, but Meeve is a very different uh, character, and she, what she cares for is the survival of her kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, and she can be cruel mm -hmm. and, and uh, harsh if you let her. And actually, on occasions, we tempt players with uh, mm -hmm. you know pretty harsh options. So when mm -hmm. somebody disagrees with you, you can treat them very uh, severely, or you can listen to what they have to say. And sometimes mm -hmm. you can promise something and then break your oath. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like you said, this has effect also on the mm -hmm. morale of your units and your mm -hmm. retinue, and they might disagree with some of your decisions, or they might, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, like it that you chose. I actually yeah. like this yeah. little little side yeah. quest. You I do don't it? know if you want to. Sure, we can do it. show it. Meeve and company passed by a village evidently pillaged by the Nilf guardians. From afar, they had heard cries, but as they drew near, they recognized them not as cries of grief, but as cursing cries of anger. Give him a proper walloping, the scoundrel! <laughs> Mercy, good folk! I've done nothing wrong! The villagers stood gathered near the hamlet's center, surrounding an elf, bloodied and cowering. Stones in hand, the peasants threatened and cursed him. The queen demanded an explanation. A ruddy-faced blacksmith stepped forth and spit. A Nilfgaardian spy the horse and his your majesty! He's the one brought him here to raise the village. He's got to hang. The other villagers agreed with the smith. The elf fell at the queen's feet and groveled. Have mercy, Renner. Save your loyal subject. They lie. They fought me only as I am an elf. So as you can see, uh, racial tensions, which were mm. uh, a running theme in our previous games, yeah. were also very important. I'd say that mm -hmm. even more so than in mm. The Witcher 3. Uh, so you will encounter many, many situations where you can uh, encounter it firsthand and, and decide what to do in a situation like this. Spare him! I'm okay, just saying, fine. just spare him. <laughs> Come on. the certainty of his guilt? Have you any proof? Asked Neve. Did anyone see him communing with the foe? Did he hold any coin with a foreign stamp? The villagers eyed Meeve angrily, their hands clenched into fists. Yet none dared utter a word in protest. Know this. The black clads need no reason to pillage our homes. Now stand aside and let this wretch go. The elf tearfully thanked the queen, then begged her not to leave him behind. Instead, he pleaded vehemently to join her retinue. Your most noble grace, please, I beg you. As soon as you're gone, the Dwan will hang me from the nearest tree. So now you have to say whether you trust him enough to take him with you. I mean, and come on. I don't know. I yeah. don't really like He seems elves. like a decent <laughs> elf. I would let him join our company. All right. Just because mm, of my so love for Squirtle. Elf. Said the queen mm -hmm. after a moment's consideration. Find the quartermaster. I know you're a Squirtle you collaborator. And yeah. now we march. The villagers oh, gazed possible. with hatred as the company left the hamlet. So as you can when see, you gained a recruit in this quest, so yes. these are direct um, mm -hmm. consequences, of consequences of but they are also long-term consequences. And as you can see, these text events, uh, is, is how we uh, call them, have beautifully hand-drawn illustrations, and there are hundreds of them, uh, and, and they're, most of them are unique, and they're uh, drawn specifically for, for the side quest you are doing right now. I like how we were merciful and nice. Mm. Although Mateusz didn't want to be so nice. Mm -hmm. Just so, put it out there. I uh, know. Okay, and another... <laughs> so actually, there is a... So we could interrupt mm -hmm. the reinforcements we talked about, yeah. but I think it's cooler to show what will happen if we yeah, don't. Because we speak mm -hmm. so much about the consequences, it's time to we show one. So yes. let's, let's just move on. So here is a uh, choice which will impact the incoming big battle. Ooh. So if we would intercept these reinforcements, the following battle would be easier. Okay. But we're just going to... Ignore them. We're just gonna make our life harder. Yes. Because why not? Oh, well, maybe let's explain how these work. So yes, these shrines you can activate once per encountering them, and these one time give you a one-time boost to morale. Ooh. However, my morale is already at the max, so I yeah. think I'll j I'm just gonna leave it. Yeah. So this is another of these small events. Mm -hmm. Yes, here as you can see, the road is blocked. So you can decide to either go around or you can... So actually what I could climb. do here, we have I could just now. Yeah. use this option yeah. to lose some morale and then I could go back to this shrine to just get it back. Yeah. And then I'm next mm, again. Nicely played. Ah, smooth. I've seen so many armed men in my life and each one in black plate and winged elm. 
I like how the side NPCs that you, when you pass through them, they they talk about what's going on and gives you and more of a feel. Their, their lines change depending on what, what you did in mm -hmm. some of the quests. So they will comment on your actions and decisions. Too many to count. I cannot fathom it. As Nilfgaard sent all its forces Ooh. into Lyria. So it seems the siege of Dragograd already started. Yeah, it's good we didn't start. God's protectors. The queen uttered a juicy curse. Dravagrad stood before them, Nilf guardians all round it. Three, perhaps four battalions of armored infantry, arbalists and cavalry behind them. Trebuchet volleys had punched holes in the walls, while battering rams had twisted the main gate open. But elsewise, the city was mere moments from falling to the foe. Doomed! We stand not a chance! Nilfgaard outnumbered us twofold! More! Then our men must put double the spirit into the fight. Double the heart. Lyria! Emboldened by their valiant queen and commander, the Lyrians charged headlong at Nilfgaard's lines into a hail of bolts and arrows. I like how Meeve always jumps into battle. Mm, mm. Yeah. She's a strong leader. Yeah, but also she's quite impatient and sometimes this yeah. is, you know, a problem. <laughs> she prefers, you know, acting to carefully pondering her options. No time for, for that, yeah. mm. straight into battle. Maybe let's mention why the uh, Arbalist has a plus at the end of his... Of his um, oh game. yes, so actually some oh. of the units uh, can be upgraded as you play throughout mm -hmm. the game. So Arbalest, for example, got upgraded because I built the training ground. Yeah. Oh yeah. So he gets stronger and uh, I think another thing that changes for him is that he gets this loyal ability. So this time, not only he will activate his ability when mm -hmm. I play him, he will also activate his ability every time Meev uses her ability. That's what the loyal units do. Yeah, and also, that's why the Scythemen get yeah, stronger yeah. every time and, I play uh, her. And your unit's strength is increased because of your high morale? Yes, as you can yeah. see, they are all boosted at the start. So yes, in this in this battle, uh, one of the special things is, first of all, he starts with some cards on the board, but uh, I can win this fight by just defeating the commander. Mm -hmm. uh, so the rest of them will basically run away. Yeah, However, it's not that easy mm -hmm. because he resets his base strength every beginning of the turn. Oh, okay. So what it means is I have to do 20 damage to him at the single turn, mm -hmm. which is not that easy. Uh, but I'm gonna try and build up for it. I never managed to do that, so oh, I'll, I'll, I'll watch and learn. Things. Actually, first of all, I'm gonna try and get rid of these trebuchets mm -hmm. because they are quite annoying. Because they'll be dealing damage, right? Yes, yeah, they'll be doing every, damage yeah. every few turns. Yeah, every so few turns. So whenever armor I build on him, they'll try to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, get rid of. So yes, I think I can kill them now. No more trebuchets. Exactly. Easy clap. And then I think I'm gonna start building up some mm -hmm. power for you this thing. Try to win them all, but you won't. It used up its order, but I have Reinhardt, so mm -hmm. I'll, do the, uh, I'll be able to do the same combo I did before. Can't take anymore. These guys. Oh yeah, actually, there is one mm -hmm. more thing. I see he played the Alba Armored Cavalry, mm -hmm. and these guys get boosted and they get armor every mm -hmm. time I activate any kind of order, either Meave's ability or orders on the cards. So, yes, I'm risking it a bit here because I'm gonna boost them every time I activate, mm -hmm. but I really wanna try mm -hmm. and beat this guy, especially that he's gonna get reinforcements in the second uh, round. Mm -hmm. They all get boosted every time. Oh, million lummoxes. We'll see if I'll be able to do it, actually. It's not that easy to do this to him. Ah, oh, come on. You got this. Okay, let's try this. Mm, actually, no, that won't work. Yeah. So actually now there is a limit of nine cards in a row. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I don't remember if it was the same in live. Mm -hmm. It is. Oh, yeah, we could try this. That nah, might not be enough. 
Oh no, it is. Easy. Okay, so I have calculated. 11 him. Boom. No more frame D. Bye bye. Mm. They retreat. Your Majesty. Oh, yeah, because I they lost voice. the command. They lost the commander, so. So we so actually lost didn't show the consequence because you were so eager to win in the first yeah, round. Yeah, I'm, yeah. You know, so, yeah, let's just I maybe... I just really wanted to kill them. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so before you click continue, let's just say that in the second round, have mm -hmm. you not uh, won in the yeah, first the round? Yeah, the reinforcements would arrive. Reinforcements that we didn't kill or didn't stop in the previous side quest would mm -hmm. have arrived and made our uh, life, life, life much, harder. much, much harder. But since you're such an expert commander and you just killed them in the first round, then the Nilf Guardians you yeah. don't have to worry about that at all. Abandoning war machines, shields and arms, even their wounded. The defenders rejoiced. They laughed boisterously and cries of delight and chanting could be heard all around. Warrior queen, they shouted. Meave, meave, meave. Hear that, your grace. I do. No sound rings more lovely to a ruler's ear. Yet rest on our laurels, we cannot. Caldwell, the situation in the town, what can you tell me? Wall breached. Thrice. 400 wounded, near a thousand without roofs over their heads. All nothing compared to the grain stalls. Went up in smoke during the siege. And it's some time yet afore the harvest. Your grace. The war's just begun, I know. All coins should bolster the army, yet if we leave the folk of Dravagrad no gold. There will be hunger, with all the attendant discord. So yes, we can uh, decide to aid mm -hmm. Ravograd. Mm -hmm. I could actually afford it. And, uh, or I could basically decide to keep the money, because mm -hmm. we need it for the war effort. Uh, definitely our soldiers will answer to this decision. Mm -hmm. They will yeah. they watch will us closely. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we can afford it right mm -hmm. now. I'm going to be generous. The drought of 1258 I remember all too well. I saw famine, what it drives folk to do, the extremes. A strong army I need desperately, yet not at all costs. The townsfolk need gold to survive till the harvest. Count how much, then give it to the garrison commander. As you command, your grace. The battle we've won, there's just the war that remains. And Nilfgaard will strike again, doubt it not. We must move on. Caldwell, ride ahead to Lyria. My son must call a gathering of the Council of Peers. Tell him so. We'll have much to discuss. Reynard and I will follow with the troops. We shall seek out any Nilfgaardian stragglers, prevent them from rejoining the main force. Meave's two adjutants bowed and left the Queen to think. She was hungry, sore from the fight, spent. Yet sensing her soldiers' eyes upon her, she set off for the stable, her gait brisk, her head held high. We did another good thing. So yes, mm -hmm. our next objective would be to go to Lyria to meet with our mm -hmm. advisors, with all the lords from the mm -hmm. land and with uh, Meave's son, Willem. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, do you think we should go on or uh, do we maybe, still have time? Maybe a little bit. Yeah. So. Okay. okay, sure. Let's now maybe get to the, to the big plot twist, but regarding also plot twists, uh, will we see a lot of these mm -hmm. within the game? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, yeah. one of the so sorry, just to show this is uh, where we're headed. So we can yeah. we have to go this uh, long winding road to mm -hmm. uh, our capital. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure we'll get there. I think we'll probably, probably stop somewhere in the we'll middle. Yeah, let's see. Um, anyway, um, so um, one of the key characteristics of our previous games and, and the way we uh, uh, craft our stories is that we like to surprise players and we like to um, come up with, with, with twists that are really unexpected. Surrounded by advisors, and discussing. This is just one of them. All at once they heard a mighty thud. Now we got sabotage. To see a cavalryman who clearly fallen from his saddle. The men who'd witnessed Did you time this? I'm impressed because you only just start, only started talking and here we go. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> Fully improvised. Shake and vomit blood. The medic's diagnosis: poison. Ooh. In spite of his best efforts, the cavalryman breathed his last that very night. Soon, several other riders developed the same symptoms, and at the last, shared their comrade's fate. All were buried at the roadside, beneath an old willow. This looks to be no coincidence, Reynard said gravely. Our stores of water, someone's poisoned them. We must find the fiend. In the interim, your majesty must quench her thirst with wine. 
So something we did uh, along our, our play caused this. For now, we don't know what. I hope it's uh, not the elf. I'm just saying. We'll learn in the future. <laughs> just saying. I hope it's not the elf. Don't blame that guy. He, he was nice. He was cool. He would never do such a bad thing. Horn sounded. Oh, my favorite. Them at once as those of the Lyrian vanguard. Lippy. She drew her sword and prepared to face the invader. Yet coming down upon her force were not Nilf guardians, but bearded warriors clad in leather, horned helmets on their heads. This, this was not so. The queen could not believe her eyes. Skelligan raiders, this far inland. But this was no time to be bewildered. Meave spurred her horse. It neighed and reared, and then the twain leapt into the fray. For Skellige's glory. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, this card is pretty overpowered. Yeah, he yeah. has 150. Yeah, so this is a short battle with special rules. And we'll have to find a way to mm -hmm. win with Lippy Goodmund. Yeah, actually, the thing about this guy is he will... Um, He's gonna wound himself if I remember correctly. Yeah. He's so gonna, it's gonna be a little gonna, bit easier. Well, he'll, he's gonna try to duel the, yeah. the most powerful units exactly. on the board, which means sometimes he'll duel his own units. And the duel is basically they two cards damage each other until one of them dies. Mm -hmm. So yeah, well right now I think whatever I'll play, he's gonna kill it. Yeah, he's gonna destroy it for sure. So uh, might just as well there. do this to boost it up a little bit and to wound him. So yeah, now he just oh. dueled me, but he also plays units of his own, obviously. Mm, this guy, yeah, he's not strong enough, so he's gonna kill another one of my dudes. But yeah, these guys boost themselves anytime their ally gets wounded. Oh, actually there's a six now, so I might... No, I still don't have anything weaker. Yeah, your weakest unit is also yeah. a six. I don't want to lose this, it's pretty good. Yeah. Maybe just the out. guy who gets the other copy, yeah. The pikeman? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure, let the pikeman die. Yeah. Safe option. <laughs> I think if they're all the same... Yeah, he picks randomly yeah. and he picked his own, that's good. So yeah, of course, this battle we can mm -hmm. uh, complete in two different ways. We can either kill him mm -hmm. or we can uh, win in points, so win a oh, standard okay. way. So if you have more points, you also mm -hmm. win the game. So there's quite a few of these battles which have special rule sets, and mm -hmm. there's actually a separate category of, of um, uh, games we call puzzles, where uh, we do crazy things, and for example, instead of facing an opponent, you might have to deal with an avalanche and falling boulders or uh, you encounter a troll who's uh, cooking a soup or you know, some other stuff. <laughs> so basically, we, since it's a single player game, it can you know, uh, be a little bit more whimsical and, and come up with these uh, crazy scenarios that we play out uh, with, with Gwent cards by, uh, by bending the rules oh, this way and that. Keeps destroying my armor on that wagon yeah. Yeah. I don't like that. Left, right, left, right. All right, let's try this. I think I'm just going to yeah. activate it because yeah, he, he will destroy it again. I have two sevens. Yeah, I have the strongest units mm. all the time. Foster another one. Another side, man. Maybe let's do this. Mm -hmm. He's gonna Company. defeat Reinhardt. Yeah. Reactivate the ability. Yeah, move those see around. See so yeah, as you can see, I can do quite a lot in my yeah. turn. It's not just playing one card anymore. Yeah. Doing lots of cool combos. Oh, he doesn't he'll, die. He'll be fine. Yeah, he'll be fine. Yeah. He'll be fine. Took one for the team. <laughs> so another thing we could mention is that uh, we really put a lot of thought into what uh, Mead's army should be uh, comprised of. And initially, uh, she had this army, which was very much like any other Northern mm -hmm. Realms army, with a lot of siege machines, a lot of mm -hmm. catapults, and so on. 
but then we realized that she's since she's always on the move, um, yeah, it, it just felt weird that she has these heavy war machines. Yeah, uh -huh. so we replaced them with m more makeshift uh, units. So there's a lot of carts, uh, which uh, serve as these, uh, you know, war machines that can be always on the move. And she also depends on scythemen, so uh, basically peasants oh. that she commissioned and uh, pass, mm -hmm. you gotta pay. told them to drop her to ways. grab their tools and, and yeah. mm -hmm. ride into battle. Again and again. Yeah, even in the tutorial we have this choices and consequences where we meet a group of peasants who have helped mm -hmm. the, um, the strays of Spala, so mm -hmm. you can yeah. well, choose the option to get them. Close. Yeah. I hope uh, he doesn't but still, I mean, you're waiting Oof, on points. That was close. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> Well, actually, it is easy. If it yeah, wasn't, exactly. I would lose. Brought mayhem. Yet the queen's ordered, disciplined force won the day. I like this art of Lippy. Entirely undismayed at their defeat, a traitor to her. Actually, this will have one of the long-lasting consequences. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So basically, what we decide here will influence the events of the fourth map. So mm. long, long way down the round. So yes, we could either punish them because they are raiding our lands, after all, yeah. or uh, we could just turn them against the Nilfgaard, although our soldiers probably won't like that yeah. we just, just let them go. Yeah. I like the second uh, option more. Yeah, I like it more as well. Me too. We all agree. Mm -hmm. We must know something first. What brings you this far inland? What drove you from the sea? Meave asked, crossing her arms. Ha! What always drives us? Looking and penetrating. <laughs> the coast had claimed since long, so we set our longships up the Yaruga for gold and glory. Amusing. I always assumed you to be honorable folk. On who dares to claim elsewise? Your very actions do so. You've attacked a land preoccupied, a land already at war with invaders. But I suppose it makes sense. You've ever feared to attack Imperials? The Queen prodded gently. What did you say, wench? Goodmund had quickly turned red with rage. I'll prove just how wrong you are, I will. Why, we'll be drinking mead from Nilfgaardian helmets for sundown. Follow me, lads! Meave smiled as she watched the islanders gather their gear and prepare to march. She doubted not in the least that Goodmund would honor his pledge. Yeah, Lippy's also a little bit hot-headed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he was feeling, easy to manipulate. I have a feeling we'll hear of him again. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, like we said <coughs> before, there are also places where we can recruit people. So, yes, there are, there are these flags that symbolize yeah. places where we can, be, basically villages, where mm -hmm. we can uh, recruit new conscripts, which can be turned into units. So oh, I think I skipped the dialogue by accident. Ah, happens to the best of us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah actually... So we could do another side quest here, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, let's do one more, <clears throat> and then we'll probably start yep, finishing exactly. off. Yeah. <clears throat> so let's see what this gathering is about. Oh, actually, could we do one more after this? <laughs> yeah, so we, we can. So of course, one character that yeah. people might know from the books. Mm -hmm. Ah, I know what you're going for. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This one is fast. Mm -hmm. Fresh recruits would be waiting to join her growing force. Alas, the commander of this fort, one Sergeant Griggs had only bad news. Your Majesty, I've not the numbers to man the walls even. The call to arms brings few new recruits and more men desert each day. Folk are terrified something awful. They don't believe in victory. So yeah, we could here try to recruit some people. We can make a speech. <laughs> or with money. Your call. <laughs> or we could just force them. Yeah. <laughs> just press them I into like service. Playing the mean queen, so yeah. I, I just force, force them. them. Yeah. Okay, let's force. Let's them. do something mean because we're always <laughs> nice because of me. Yeah. Well, I did kill those new guardians. <laughs> well, yeah. They Aside are to from fight, that. and that is the end of it. Sergeant, you must issue a call that all Crydon's inhabitants, aged 16 to 40 summers, are to report to the garrison. Anyone shirking this duty shall face a fine. And a public lashing. The prospect Ooh. of facing the royally ordained so Yeah, our people Ooh. didn't like that really. They're not too happy. But we have some more new recruits. We'll pray at a shrine and make <laughs> We'll fix it. We'll just yeah. pray at a shrine. The gods will, for will forgive us. Yeah. Hey. Uh, maybe another thing that's worth mentioning that mm. uh, is there the notice board because mm -hmm. that's an iconic. Could you get back for it? Oh, you want to show it? Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's an iconic element of the Witcher universe. Okay. Yeah. In the past, it was Geralt who'd uh, go to a notice board and look for uh, for things to do. 
Uh, here, when you when you click on the notice board, it mm -hmm. lights up with things. New markers. Do, so you see uh, quests and loot and puzzles that you can uh, decide to go mm -hmm. and, and explore. So yeah, it basically uncovers activities mm -hmm. on a region map. All right, I'm just going to run really quick mm -hmm. to this one more dialogue, and I think we're going to end yeah, there. Sounds good. So the side quest you wanted to show. Mm -hmm. Yes. Here we go. Who's that guy? On their way to the capital, me even come to the happen cool one fine show day the second on part of that rider. as well. <laughs> I, her I would immediately oh, have recognized his young. passionate gaze. Yeah, we can. Well, we I mean, we can. Chivalrous. We're not young, but tonight is young, so we can go for it. Yourself, sir, and your intent. Ache of Dinell, I am dubbed, and my design I never conceal. The good book says the world is a garden which the gods once conferred upon man. And we men have this garden neglected. In consequence, all manner of filth has made its lair here. Drowners, ghouls, and other kobolds. I have sworn ne'er to rest until the day when, with the gods' help, I have rid the world of these beasts and pests. I wander all lands, seeking out evil and facing it in mortal combat. Who do I like we spy? The they're making? A knight errant. Mm. <laughs> mm. Just as likely a madman. <laughs> I like that remark. So this is Ake of the Nels. It's hunt. a character from the books. Mm -hmm. the uh, so monster. even though knowing the books and the games is not necessary to enjoy the Thronebreaker campaign, you can start playing it without knowing this thing about the Witch universe and just be fully able to enjoy it. Yeah. But if you have read the books, there'll be a lot of little winks mm -hmm. and nods and yeah. things Easter to discover. eggs. <laughs> we like those. It's more full of spiked teeth. The wings of a bat it is said to have. The tail of a scorpion, and from it, a thick venom drips. Learned men call this variety a manticore, or hmm. mardiacore. Perhaps it will be most prudent, then, to send for a witcher. A witcher? <laughs> Soulless automatons, they are all, feeding on common folk's fears. What they demand gold to do, I perform without demand of any coin. Serey. Noblemen. Far be it from me mm -hmm. to discourage you. Your endeavor is noble, no doubt. But from what I have heard, manticores are exceedingly dangerous beasts. To defeat this filth alone could be a difficult task, I'll not deny. Yet try it I must. For it is what I have sworn before the gods. Yeah, I was gonna help him. Mm. I want yeah. him to join us. Of mm. course. Mm. <laughs> we shall help you find and fight the manticore. Provided you then pledge to help us fight an even fiercer and filthier beast. Of course, my lady. Yet what manner of horror is it? A vipper? A griffin? A drake of some rare form? Were it only. Tis a beast of a thousand heads, covered in black armor, its fire consuming whole villages. Noble lady. I know vestures only in parts, yet I've seen some of the world, and never have I heard of such a terror. You need but look about you, and spot Nilfgaard's legions. <laughs> She's not amused. Pause. <laughs> but you must forgive me, Your Grace. This struggle between realms is not one to which I can lay a hand. I insist. Mm -hmm. How great is its appetite? How many men does it fell, in a moon, let us say? It changes. At a time when the horror broods, it may be as many as twenty. I see. As now you must. Nilfgaard, in my capital, could mean as many as twenty thousand felled. You live to fight evil, injustice, do you not? You can fight none greater than by doing so at my side. The Manticore, your grace, must fall first. As to what happens later, I shall need to consult the good book and petition the gods. Agreed, so be it. This monster, where lies its lair? Where does it prowl? To the north, my queen. A few leagues on. To the north. Mm -hmm. So actually, now we got egg in our yeah, party. Yeah. 
You can chat him, yeah, check him out in the mess tent yeah. and actually yeah. talk yeah. to him here. We can talk to him. And later on, you can expect to fill out the canteen with mm -hmm. companions. And of course, he's also a card. So we got him uh, in our deck. Mm -hmm. So I have too many things. Uh. Your provision cost went up. Yeah. Uh, one point. Nah. I'm not going to put him in then. <laughs> yet. No egg. You have to put another card. Yeah, I have to put something back in. OK. In any case, so. I think, do you guys want to help him? Yeah. Do you want to show the Manticore? Yeah, let's show the Manticore. I think Manticore is The Manticore cool. is epic, we have to show it. I mean... And also you might have uh, noticed that uh, Witchers were mentioned, and even though we haven't met one yet, <laughs> who knows, maybe we'll get a chance to do so. Is near. I sense it. Yeah, so also look how the map changed mm -hmm. right now. We're, we're covered in fog, and it looks spooky, and we're getting straight to the Manticore's lair. Mm -hmm. oh. At the furthest depth of the winding, gloomy canyon, Scouts found the maw of a great cavern. Among the boulders outside it, whitening bones lay strewn. Ake dismounted and drew his blade. By the God's grace, we found the beast's lair, he said, lifting his gaze to the heavens. We need them but to extend their favor as we battle the filth. Meave cast a critical eye at her shield. Wood clad in leather and thin plate. Enough to stop a sword, certainly, but would it protect her from a beast's raging blow? Noticing her hesitation, Reynard approached the queen and said, Your grace, none will utter a disparaging word should you step back. But they will think them, replied Meave. And that's bad enough. The war has begun. I can't appear weak to my fighting men. Without awaiting an answer, Meave strode into the cave. The rest of the company followed, equally full of fear and faith in their queen and commander. Moments later, a great and powerful roar filled the cavern. Here we go. So yes, actually this one is pretty special. It's a story combat and even though I didn't add uh, Ake to my deck, yeah. since this is so important for him, he will be present. Yeah. Uh, and, wait, I'll need a lot of damage here, so I'm gonna get rid of the peasants. And you have low morale, so... Yeah. They lost a little bit on power, so mm. as you can see, they are already wounded in some way, but that's because of the morale going yes. down. Yes. Yes, unfortunately, I did force these peasants mm. into our army. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go, the Manticore in its glory. So, as you can see, this one is very custom. So, the Manticore consists of six, six cards, and each of them does different things. And actually, it doesn't play any cards, since it's just a Manticore. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, for example, the tail, it will destroy the leftmost enemy unit on the melee row. Uh, and also it deals damage whenever my units move. The wings will be pushing my units to the range draw. Uh, with the claws, it will be de dealing damage. Dealing damage, yeah. So, fortunately, I have Ake to do some special things as well. And Ake will become stronger every time one of my units get wounded. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, she will do a lot of damage, so yes, it will happen. Uh, I'm gonna use me to try and damage the wings. Mm -hmm. And obviously the objective here is to kill the head of the Manticore. Of course. Uh, Army's a waste of time for one like me. I'm gonna make some room for the units. Mm -hmm. so as you can see, he gets boosted mm -hmm. because they got moved and damaged. Left, right, left, right. And his big thing is that whenever he gets played, he will damage an enemy by his own power. So, so yeah, we really want to boost him you as want much to boost as him up and play him. Mm -hmm. So he can destroy the head mm -hmm. of the Manticore. Oh, you can also destroy different parts mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, okay, I just want to target the... Okay, not yet. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to kill the wings, so it will start pushing my units back. Um, could you show Ake's premium? Because it looks sure. pretty cool. Mm -hmm. yeah, there it is. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty so cool. cool. This is the golden dragon he hunted in oh, the short story. Hunt. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he tried to yeah. fight it, yeah. Look at him go. 
If you want to know what happened next, you have to talk with him in the canteen. Mm. Mm. Maria! Yeah, we could kill the wing, actually. Well, destroy the wing. Yeah. Now, well, it still has one, but it will be able to move less of my units, uh, units yeah. I'm wondering, should I actually kill the... Yeah, let's oh destroy no. the second one. No more wings. Yep. To the ground with you, pestilent filth. <laughs> it will stop use, uh, moving my pestilent units. Pestilent filth. But it still has the other hmm. things it can do. Give me a target. Okay, I still need to do a little bit more damage to it. So yeah, still this I can't really use on it. Let's try Reinhardt maybe. No. We must trust each other. I can use the drummers again and summon some more units. You can try to win them all, but you won't. You won't. This harvest will be reaping black clad heads. Oh yeah, this will boost Ike oh, a lot. Oh yeah. He likes this. <laughs> oh 36. Alright, and I yeah, we can finish it up with the him. Should help. Our codex oh. commands it. And yeah, it's gone. It's dead. We must thank the gods for this victory, both great and just. Nice. That's one manticore less. At their side, the Lyrians fell the manticore. Later, it was said the beast's dying wail, multiplied and strengthened as it passed through the caverns, could be heard as far as Spala. Your grace. Many monarchs have I met in my time, yet none proved as virile in battle as did your majesty. Virile? I dislike the term. Seems not to suit a woman. I prefer valiant. Yet grateful I am for the compliment. Now pray reveal, have you made your decision? Will you swear to serve me? Are you prepared to take an oath? I am not, your grace. I can serve only the gods. Yet, I do believe them to be on your side as one unjustly and treacherously attacked. Thus I see nothing wrong in assisting. Then I am content and welcome you in my ranks, Sir Ake of Donnell. The knight errant bowed low from the waist. So low, in fact, the gambeson neath his mail creaked. Meave could only hope he would battle Nilf guardians as boldly as he faced beasts. Nice. Okay. So actually, I think we could finish up here. I'm yeah. just going to show you one more thing. Because we killed the Manticore, we got another trophy, which is the Ooh. Manticore trophy. Ooh. And yeah, I could replace my own. This one is actually pretty useful. So uh, whenever the enemy plays a card, they mm -hmm. get wounded. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I love the premium. It's pretty good. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think that's pretty much uh, Well, we could play more, but I think I we think that's enough. Moment, we don't really want moment, to yeah. Yeah. go deep into the story and spoil mm -hmm. it. Um, one last question before we mm -hmm. wrap up. This is the first map that we saw, mm -hmm. but there are four additional ones. Yes. Which is your favorite, personal favorite? Well, I would say Angren. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the fourth map. Mm -hmm. I like it a lot because it has a lot of this Witcher feeling. Like if you played uh, Witcher 3, you might remember Velen, you might remember Bloody Baron, you might remember the Crowns and so mm -hmm. on. It's pretty much similar vibe. Oh, okay. uh, it's uh, it's a uh, swampy swamp, land mm. uh, filled with monsters mm -hmm. and uh, people who abuse power and yeah, stuff like and that. Old it's really cool. To unravel and it's very creepy. Yeah. And uh, feels like uh, you know mm -hmm. a very dangerous part of the Witcher universe. What about My you? My uh, favorite part though is Mahakam, the Dwarven Kingdom. Uh, I've always wanted to show it in one of our games, and I'm really happy that I had a chance to work on this. So when we decided we will be showing Mahakam, I spent months designing the mm -hmm. document which mm -hmm. tried to outline well, how it differs from the rest of the Witcher universe, well, what makes it special. And, uh, and then our artists made an amazing job at uh, representing this snowy realm yeah. uh, cut off from the rest of the continent, and I'm really happy mm -hmm. with how it came yeah. together. And you guys showed the maps and they're hand drawn also, and they yeah. yes. really, really cool. Yes. Yeah. And of course, every region has its own region map, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is uh, very custom, and they are also some of them are a different style. Yeah, they have a different feel too. Because exactly. Mahakam, for example, it's, it's stylized to be drawn by the dwarves, mm -hmm. so it's more. Uh, crude and yeah, less, it's more uh, crude, and I also like yeah, yeah. the style, and that's what sets them apart. 
All right, guys, that's it uh, for today. Thank you for watching. Thronebreaker actually comes out on PC in 21 days. If you want to pre-order it, go to witchertales.com and grab a copy. That's it. I'm going to say bye. And Thanks. you guys Thanks also can say bye. 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 <laughs> Thanks for watching.